Welcome to our presentation on MASLD, or Metabolic Dysfunction Associated Steatotic Liver Disease. Today, we'll explore its overview, including new and emerging treatments. This session aims to provide a comprehensive understanding of MSLD, its progression, and management strategies. Let's begin our journey into this critical health topic. MSLD, or Metabolic Dysfunction Associated Steatotic Liver Disease, represents a spectrum of liver diseases linked to metabolic dysfunction. Previously known as Non-Alcoholic Fatty Liver Disease, NAFLD, MASLD highlights the metabolic roots of liver steatosis. Understanding this shift is crucial for accurate diagnosis and treatment. The progression of MASLD begins with simple steatosis, advancing to metabolic dysfunction-associated steatohepatitis, MASH, fibrosis, and potentially cirrhosis or hepatocellular carcinoma. Recognizing these stages is vital for timely intervention and management, preventing severe liver damage. Breaking down MASLD by disease stage, we see that simple steatosis affects 70 to 75 percent of patients, MASH impacts 20 to 30 percent, fibrosis affects 15 to 20 percent, and cirrhosis is present in about 5 percent. These statistics underscore the importance of early detection and intervention in MASLD management. Globally, MASLD affects 25 to 30 percent of adults, with 30 to 35 percent prevalence in the U.S. It's a leading cause of liver transplantation in Western countries, driven by rising obesity and diabetes rates. MASLD significantly impacts healthcare costs and workforce productivity, highlighting the need for effective management strategies. Key risk factors for MSLD include obesity, type 2 diabetes, dyslipidemia, hypertension, sedentary lifestyle, and high fructose diets. Clinically, MASLD is often asymptomatic, with nonspecific symptoms like fatigue and abdominal discomfort. Advanced disease may present with signs like hepatomegaly or even stigmata of cirrhosis, such as ascites or jaundice. MSLD management involves confirming diagnosis through imaging or biopsy, assessing metabolic comorbidities, and initiating lifestyle changes. Pharmacologic treatment is considered for high-risk or biopsy-proven MASH. Ongoing monitoring of liver enzymes and fibrosis scores and timely referral to hepatology are key. Diagnosing MASLD requires evidence of hepatic steatosis and metabolic dysfunction, excluding other causes like significant alcohol use, viral hepatitis, or drug-induced liver injury. It's crucial to recognize that MASLD can coexist with other hepatic conditions, complicating diagnosis and treatment. Laboratory evaluation for MASLD includes liver enzyme tests, lipid panels, and glucose screening. Elevated AST and ALT ratios may indicate advanced fibrosis. Despite normal liver enzymes, imaging and fibrosis assessments remain critical for accurate diagnosis and management. Imaging for MASLD includes ultrasound, CT scans, MRI PDFF, and elastography. Ultrasound remains the first-line imaging modality for detecting steatosis. However, newer techniques like transient elastography, FibroScan, and magnetic resonance elastography offer quantification of liver stiffness, helping assess fibrosis non-invasively. Each modality offers unique benefits, from detecting steatosis to assessing liver stiffness. Selecting the appropriate imaging technique is crucial for accurate diagnosis and monitoring of MASLD progression. Fibrosis risk stratification is a crucial step in MASLD management, as the degree of fibrosis is the strongest predictor of liver-related and overall mortality. The FIB4 index is a simple, widely used, non-invasive tool that uses age, AST, ALT, and platelet count to estimate fibrosis risk values. Values below 1.3 suggest low risk, Values above 2.67 indicate high risk, and intermediate scores require further assessment. The NAFLD fibrosis score, NFS, incorporates additional variables like BMI, diabetes status, albumin, and the AST and ALT ratio, offering another reliable method to stratify patients. For more precise evaluation, transient elastography, 
FibroScanner, measures liver stiffness, and helps correlate with metavir fibrosis stages, while MR elastography and shear wave ultrasound provide higher sensitivity in specialized settings. Together, these tools help guide decisions on monitoring frequency, hepatology referral, and the need for liver biopsy, making them essential in both primary care and specialty practice. Early identification of high-risk patients can significantly improve outcomes in MASLD management. Liver biopsy is considered when there's diagnostic uncertainty, suspected MASH with advanced fibrosis, or for clinical trial eligibility. While invasive, biopsy provides definitive histological evidence, crucial for accurate diagnosis and treatment planning in complex MASLD cases. The Metavir scoring system is a widely accepted framework for assessing liver fibrosis and inflammatory activity, particularly useful in chronic liver diseases like MASLD. It grades fibrosis from F0, no fibrosis, to F4, cirrhosis, and activity from A0, no inflammation, to A3, severe inflammation, providing a standardized way to evaluate liver histology, especially in biopsy specimens. While biopsy remains the gold standard, non-invasive techniques such as transient elastography, fibroscan, and MR elastography now allow clinicians to estimate metavir equivalent stages by measuring liver stiffness with defined thresholds. Identifying patients with F2 fibrosis or greater or moderate to severe inflammation, A2 to A3, is clinically crucial, as these individuals are at increased risk for progression to cirrhosis, liver-related complications, and hepatocellular carcinoma, and they may benefit from pharmacologic treatment. Lifestyle management of MASLD is foundational and focuses primarily on weight loss through a combination of dietary modification, increased physical activity, and behavioral changes. Current guidelines from leading hepatology societies, including the American Association for the Study of Liver Diseases, AASLD, and the European Association for the Study of the Liver, EASL, emphasize a gradual weight loss of 7 to 10 percent of body weight as the target to significantly reduce liver fat, inflammation, and fibrosis. This is typically achieved via a hypocaloric diet that reduces saturated fats and simple sugars while increasing fiber and whole foods, alongside at least 150 minutes per week of moderate-intensity aerobic exercise. The Mediterranean diet is specifically recommended within current guidelines for MASLD management. It is favored because it emphasizes consumption of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, legumes, olive oil, and lean protein sources like fish. Additionally, addressing comorbid conditions such as type 2 diabetes, dyslipidemia, and hypertension is critical. Sustained lifestyle changes are recommended as the cornerstone of MASLD treatment, given their proven impact on liver histology and overall metabolic health. Pharmacologic management of MASLD is considered for patients with biopsy-proven MASH, fibrosis, or those who fail lifestyle therapy. Identifying candidates for pharmacologic intervention is essential for preventing disease progression and improving patient outcomes. Established therapies for MASLD include thiazolidinediones, GLP-1 receptor agonists, and vitamin E. According to current guidelines from the American Association for the Study of Liver Diseases and the European Association for the Study of the Liver, pioglitazone is supported by strong evidence from randomized controlled trials demonstrating improvements in liver inflammation, steatosis, and fibrosis, especially in patients with type 2 diabetes. Vitamin E has also been shown to improve histological features of NASH in non-diabetic patients by reducing oxidative stress, although its long-term safety profile limits widespread use. Additionally, glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor agonists, GLP-1-RAs, such as semaglutide, have shown promising results in reducing liver fat and improving metabolic parameters in clinical trials, though they are not yet formally approved specifically for MASLD treatment. These pharmacotherapies are recommended to be used alongside lifestyle interventions, targeting metabolic risk factors to improve liver outcomes in selected patients with advanced disease. 
Emerging therapies for MASLD, like resmetirome, saroglitazar, and lanifibranor, show promise in improving NASH and fibrosis. Resmetirum, brand name Resdifra, is the first FDA-approved pharmacologic therapy for metabolic dysfunction-associated steatohepatitis, MASH. Approved in March 2024, resmetirum is a selective thyroid hormone receptor beta agonist that targets the liver to reduce hepatic fat accumulation and improve fibrosis. In the pivotal Maestro Nash Phase 3 trial, resmetirum demonstrated significant efficacy, with 30% of patients achieving Nash resolution without worsening fibrosis, and 26% experiencing at least one stage improvement in fibrosis, compared to 10% and 14% respectively in the placebo group. Additionally, resmetirum led to a 16% reduction in LDL cholesterol levels, highlighting its potential cardiovascular benefits. These novel agents offer hope for more targeted and effective treatments, addressing the complex metabolic dysfunctions underlying MSLD. Monitoring MSLD requires a structured, multidisciplinary approach, combining clinical assessment, laboratory evaluation, and imaging to detect disease progression and guide timely intervention. Clinically, weight, waist circumference, blood pressure, and adherence to lifestyle changes should be assessed at regular visits. Laboratory monitoring should include liver enzymes, ALT, AST, every 6 to 12 months, along with HbA1c, or fasting glucose and lipid panels, to track metabolic comorbidities. Fibrosis risk should be evaluated annually using non-invasive tools like the FIB4 index or NAFLD fibrosis score. Imaging with ultrasound or transient elastography, e.g. fibroscan, is recommended every one to three years depending on the patient's risk profile, and MR elastography may be used for further clarification in ambiguous cases. Referral to hepatology is warranted if FIB4 exceeds 2.67, if advanced fibrosis is suspected on imaging, or if portal hypertension signs are present, liver biopsy is reserved for diagnostic uncertainty or treatment decisions in high-risk patients. As we wrap up, it's important to reflect on how our understanding and approach to MSLD. MSLD is now recognized as the most prevalent chronic liver disease globally, largely driven by the growing epidemics of obesity, insulin resistance, and sedentary lifestyles. It can silently progress from steatosis to MASH, fibrosis, and cirrhosis, ultimately increasing the risk for hepatocellular carcinoma and cardiovascular death. While lifestyle modification remains the cornerstone of management, emerging pharmacotherapies are ushering in a new era of personalized treatment. Agents like pioglitazone and GLP-1 receptor agonists offer established histological benefits and address comorbidities like diabetes and obesity. Most notably, resmetirum, a thyroid hormone receptor viru agonist, became the first FDA-approved therapy for NASH with fibrosis, marking a critical milestone. Looking ahead, the future of MASLD treatment is shifting toward individualized, risk-based care, integrating non-invasive diagnostics, advanced imaging, and molecular profiling, Several novel agents targeting inflammation, fibrosis, and metabolic dysfunction are in late-stage trials and may soon expand our therapeutic arsenal. Thank you for joining our presentation on MASLD. For more insights, watch our video on pharmacotherapy of MASLD. Stay informed and subscribe for updates on the latest in liver disease management. Your engagement is vital in advancing understanding and treatment of MASLD.